Hello everybody, my name is Austin and welcome back to Let's Talk About and Today I'm going to talk about the Hellboy 2019 remake. This is going to be a movie review about basically what I thought of the movie and if you should go see it or not. Whether it's good, bad, whatever. I'm not going to do a spoiler review. I was debating on it. I don't think I'm going to. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it as its own thing, kind of. Um, not its own thing. Yeah, I'm going to leave this video as its own thing and kind of just... You know, see you if this gets, you know, see if anyone watches this or not. And if so, I'll keep doing movie reviews along with my game stuff. Um, but yeah, so throughout this entire thing, I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to be talking about, I guess the first parts, I'm going to talk about makeup. The next part, I'm going to be talking about the story overall. And then next part, I'm going to be talking about, um, the way I kind of, like, like my overall summary of it. Summary over it. Yeah, it seems kind of, or, you know. You know, I'm basically going to go like that. You know, I'm going to have three points to this or whatever. So, let's get into it. So, I first want to start off with the hair, makeup, everything like that. This movie has some of the best prosthetics I've ever seen in a long, long time. Like, this movie is, like, the way they use, the amount of actual makeup and actual prosthetics they use in this movie is mind-boggling. Because it's so much stuff. It's super cool. Like... Of course, all of David Harbour, you know, Hellboy, all of his stuff is all practical, which is super awesome. Most of his stuff is all practical. There are certain parts where they need to, like, over-exaggerate the mouth a bit. Like, like say if he's, like, yelling or something like that. So they need to, like, use CGI to, you know, to help it look more natural, which is fine, you know, which is cool. You know, and that look good when they're doing like that. Um, they, there are parts that were practical with just blood and stuff like that. And, like, there's just one scene in the movie... Uh, not, not in one scene. There's this bad guy in the movie. I forgot his name. It's just, like this big giant half, like uh, he's a big giant boar, kind of dude. And like the entire, almost, almost the entire time of the movie, he is practical effects, which is outstanding. I love that because it's so important to me for a movie, especially like Hellboy or just a monster movie like that. It has that kind of like realness. To it because yes you know clearly that you're not going to see that walking around but it's super real and it feels real and plus it just looks like it just looks outstanding now there were certain points of the movie where i felt the practical stuff looked a little weird kind of on hellboy but it wasn't to the point where everyone's saying like oh it looks so bad it looks like he's made of rubber <laughs> being little babies you know it wasn't to that point it still looked good and looked believable now another thing is uh The CGI in the movie, okay? I'm gonna get to that part. CGI isn't the best, but it's certainly not the worst. There's a certain part of the ending involving a certain character, which I'm pretty sure if you've seen the movie, you know who I'm talking about, where their head is kind of just there, and, like, the rest of the body is, like, really badly CGI'd. And, like, the actor, you can tell that he's, like, in good shape, so it's like, why not just have the motion capture be from the waist down and not from, you know, and... Why not have it being from the waist down instead of having it from, like, the top of the neck down? It doesn't make really any sense, you know? Like, it, it just looks super re weird and really bad. Other parts of the CGI, it looked fine. You know, it's not the best thing. You know, you can kind of tell that they use a lot of their stuff for practical effects, which is fine, you know? Which I would rather kind of have that. But, you know, certain CGI, it, it wasn't to the point where it was so bad where I was just instantly pulled out of the movie. I wasn't like, oh my god, this, you know, it looks so bad. I can't even concentrate on the movie. It was there, you know, I noticed it. It wasn't really that much of it. But mainly I was in the movie the entire time. And then, alright, um, uh, let me think. What else did I want to talk about? Characters, yes. Characters, characters, characters. So you have Hellboy, obviously. You have Alice. I forgot where the last name is. Um, she's a, like, good friend of Hellboys and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure I haven't read the comic books, so I don't really know. Then you have Hellboy's father. I forgot his name. I'm really sorry. Um, and then you have, oh, what's his name? He's the uh, the Asian guy. Um, he was like the really good actor. Oh my god, he he was really good in this. I can't remember. I'm gonna call him. Oh, you know what? Here, hold on. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, uh, while I'm doing this, I, I'm kind of want to talk about the monsters in this movie are really well designed. Um, 
it's really clever on how they um like, excuse me real quick anyways um let me see here the Asian guy is named Benjamin Daimio Daimio I'm calling him Benjamin alright Okay, hold on. Okay. Anyways, excuse me. I'm pretty sure his name is Benjamin Diamo. Diamo. Mio. Anyways, the the way the characters work in this game are uh, I'm not game. The way the characters interact and just are in the movie feel more natural than most superhero movies now. And I'm not I'm not meaning like DC, like because even in certain Marvel movies like Infinity War when you have like. Uh, Star Lord, Iron Man, and Drax, you know, like Peter, like they're all there when they're first meeting, whatever. Uh, spoiler, uh, kind of spoilers for Infinity War, whatever. Anyways, so, like, you hear, um, uh, Tony's like, you know, or no, uh, you, you hear, uh, Star Lord, he's like, he's like, where's Gamora? And then Tony's like, I'll do you one better. Uh, uh, who's Gamora? And then Drax's like, I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? And it's just so out of place and so just not. You know, supposed to be there. Whereas in Hellboy, there's a lot of jokes that stick and land, and like the characters just feel more natural, and they feel just more. They feel just more real than what the Ron, than what the uh, Del Toro version did. Because with his, they kind of just felt like there. They didn't feel like characters. They felt there. Just you know, it, it, it just I really didn't like them in Del Toro's. I like the Del Toro movie. I just movies. I just didn't like the characters too much in there. I'm this one. Um, excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get more professional at this. I swear. Um, excuse me. Anyways, I just felt the way the characters interacted and just the, they felt more real. Than what the Ron Perlman. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Ron Perlman because it's easier for me to remember. It felt more real than the Ron Perlman's Hellboy movie. Now, I guess the big elephant, the elephant in the room, which, uh, you know, what? I'll go over, I'll go over, I will go over. Excuse me, which Hellboy I like more at the end of the uh, video. I think that'll be better fitting for it. But um, uh, let me think. Story wise. The story, it, it was okay. It was a pretty good story, easy to follow along with. You know, you got the kind of points. There's a lot of exposition, like a lot of it. But it's good. For the first remake of Hellboy, it's good. So you know who Hellboy is. You know, you get a more idea into the world of Hellboy. You understand that, oh, pardon me. <sighs> you understand that, oh, there are these monsters. Oh, Hellboy, he... He he helps the humans, but they fear him. You know, like that kind of thing. You know, like 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 you learn some stuff that the Ron Perlman one didn't let you know in. Like didn't like key you in on, which I thought was something very interesting and very cool, very unique kind of to the story. Um, but there was a lot of kind of gates left open for it. Like. I don't want to spoil it too much, but there's, like, some, like, doors that were kind of just left open there, and it was like, whoa, are they gonna, like, I don't know, it's, it's, they couldn't go off with it to either have a TV show, they can do movies, like, they can do that kind of thing. Now, for me, I would like to see a BPRD TV show. I think it'd be really cool, like, you could see maybe Hellboy's father before he, uh... Before he found Hellboy, you know, going on missions, maybe he can find that, maybe it can just be like, like those kind of things, you know, just them finding, you know, I, I but I would like a BPRD TV show, I think that would be very interesting, not a movie, I don't need a movie, I want a TV show, and I think that could be very cool, open up the universe even more to even, like, to these, uh, to more the possibilities of what's in this new Hellboy world. Like, that's when the doors kind of leave open, and, like, there's just, just a whole bunch of different things like that for story-wise. But it was still good. It was your basic superhero movie. You have this bad, you have this bad guy who has an evil henchman, and the good guy's gonna stop them. But they need to, like, like you know, it's like, 
It's like they need to use everything they got to stop the bad guy. You know, it's one of those stories. It's 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 a good story nonetheless. You know. Um. Now the villains. Nimue and I forgot what his name is, but he's the boar. I'm gonna call him the boar. Nimue was kind of just the uh, just your basic everyday superhero villain. You know, like I'm going to destroy the world because I'm evil. <laughs> that kind of thing and it's you know nothing new but Mila Jovenik I don't really like her as an actress in most movies mainly in Resident Evil I think she you know that kind of really dampened my opinion on her just in general but in this movie I like and respect her more now I guess like pardon me like now after seeing this I see oh, okay I think it would like I think it was just the movie Resident Evil that had a bad script and it wasn't you yourself and so with this movie this movie had a good script very entertaining not the best script but it's super entertaining a super awesome movie and excuse me oh pardon me I'm having a lot, a lot of burps coming up um, it was something very entertaining and something very refreshing and like with Mila Jovenik's character I feel like Nimue was kind of just more of a natural villain, you know, same old, same old villain, but Mila Jovenik brought something to her character that we kind of haven't seen before with a villain in this kind of area of Hellboy. And then the boar, I really, I, I liked him more than her, I think, in the end, but that's because he had more of, like, an intention, like, like, why he was evil, why he's doing this, and it gives you a good reason, it makes sense in the movie, You're like, oh, wow, that's kind of a good reason to hate Hellboy, you know, like, like, that's pretty reasonable. Like, I kind of... I would hate him, too, I guess. You know? Like, it makes sense. He's more relatable, I guess, you would, you know, in a weird way. Whereas Nimue, not so much, you know? And so, it, it, it it's just cool. Not, not cool, I'm sorry. I'm using the wrong words. It, it was just cool to see kind of... Oh, yeah, cool. To see, like, a more relatable villain in, like, a really weird way. But it wasn't relatable in, like, the most normal sense. It was kind of just... Oh, okay, I understand him. I get him. I get why he's doing this. It makes total sense. Now, I kind of want to move on to Alice. She was an interesting character for me. In the trailers, I really didn't like her character. I was like, this is dumb. Why are they having her? Why are they going with this story? I think it's called, like, The Blood Oath? Or, no. I forgot what the comics are going off of in the movie, but it's something... I, I forgot what it is, but... I was kind of just like, why would you choose this or why would you choose her? It doesn't make any sense. Kind of stupid. Why don't you choose, I, I forgot her name, the fire chick, you know? It's like, why don't you do that? But it makes sense because the comic book they're going by, it's really good. I I didn't read it, but I read parts of it and I kind of just skimmed over it. And it was it, and it, it was really good. And I, after reading the comic books and then like kind of like, you know, doing research on Alice's character and then actually seeing her on the screen, I liked her so much more. And I loved, the, like... Jeez, I can't remember her name, but I love the actress for Alice. She was so cool, and she was just super, you know, just super funny and just super cool. And then seeing her with Hellboy talking and, like, joking around and stuff, it was super cool. And it's really, it is really just awesome, you know? I really liked her character. Now, Benjamin. He was pretty cool. I thought he was going to be annoying. I thought he was going to be, like, you know... Oh, I hate dead. I hate Hellboy. So I need to talk. You know, I need to talk down about him and talk down to him. Blah 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 blah. But it was kind. Of, but I find me like. I found out that I kind of like liked him a lot as like a character, and I kind of wish they did more with his character. I kind of wish they did more with his story, kind of. But I can kind of see why they didn't, because it kind of leaves him his past still a mystery, like. Yeah, because it tells you how he got his powers and stuff like that. Because he he because he wasn't born with the powers, but it kind of it gives you more insight on like, oh, how do you get these powers? How like can he give them to someone? Like, what's going on? Like, it gives you more of an insight on things, and I really appreciate that. Or not insight. It gives you more like questions of it, and it makes me it makes it more like mysterious. Now I want to talk about the relationship the relationship between Hellboy and his father. A lot of people said that that was like a bad point in the movie, that that was annoying, whatever. He kept going back to that as like a reason why he's doing this. I thought that was really well done, and it kind of, a lot of the things that people that a lot of the things that people are complaining about in this movie, they make sense if you actually think about it and you actually pay attention because it tells you like, excuse me, 
it's like it tells you like hey Hellboy is not a normal person you know he was never he was never a normal kid he never had a normal childhood and because of that he kind of resents his father a little bit but he still loves him because that's his dad you know like like he still loves him not father I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I meant dad yeah <laughs> anyways um it, it, it just makes sense because like a bunch of points that Hellboy brings up he's like you know you turned me to a goddamn weapon this is that you found me blah 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 you know, you could have killed me this is that you know and then you find out from the dad he's like you know you find out his side you, know, you find out like why he didn't do what he was supposed to do and you've seen the Del Toro version you've seen the uh, you read the comic books you know, you know that that's what the dad the dad was originally there to kill Hellboy that's what he was supposed to do Clearly, he did, or else there would there'd be a really, sh really short movie. <laughs> no, but, you know, you get more of an idea of, you get more idea where they're both coming from, and it, and it works really good in the movie, and I think it kind of just works kind of natural. Now, something I would like, would have liked to see more was Hellboy going into the human world, human world, Hellboy going on the streets and seeing people actually afraid of him. Because the movie, I heard that that was going to rely a, quite a bit, like, on this. Like, it was going to be Hellboy trying to fit into society and go, like, where does he fit? That, that kind of thing. You know, and it's like, and you didn't really get any of that besides, no, you don't get any of that. Except for, like, one part, just like in the trailer when he walks in and, like, you can kind of see people at a table, like, watching, like, this, like, store, this sandwich shop. And this, uh, they can see these people behind him. You know, like at a table, just kind of look over at them, but the camera never pans to them. You see it in the background. That's the only kind of thing you actually see from the movie. You never see an actual, like, hey, people are afraid of him. People hate him. People think he's a freak. But I would have liked to have seen that. It would have given Hell. It would have given Hellboy more. Pardon me. Excuse me. It would have given him more of it, in a weird way, a human vibe. And I think that could have benefit. I think the movie could have benefited a lot from it. But you know, you know. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm just having to do this thing real quick. I'm just trying to do some research. No, um, and I just thought that that the movie would have benefited over that, you know, with having kind of more. It, it would have made Hellboy feel like an actual person instead of being like, you know, oh, he says that they cheated him wrong, but you never really get to see it, you know? I don't know. I would have liked it more if we saw people actually hating him and actually thinking he's a freak, whatever. Or maybe even like a little montage of him trying out things in life from when he was going from, like an opening montage of him going from like a kid to uh, an adult. You know, like, like, like kind of like... Like him struggling in school, or you know, him trying to get a job, or the, you know, these kind of things. But eh, you didn't get to see it, so oh well. It, it, it's fine. The movie still worked out pretty good. Um, another thing. The uh, let's see here. Let me think. What else did I want to talk about? What else did I want to talk about? Okay. I want to talk about David Harbour as Hellboy specifically. He is a he's an amazing, outstanding actor and an amazing and truly badass Hellboy. In my opinion, hear me out, I like him way more than Ron Perlman as Hellboy. Because Ron Perlman, when he was playing it, he was very bland. He was very just, okay, you know, let me go do this and what the hell? And blah. He never really... You can kind of tell he didn't really care about it. He was trying to do it for the money. And then when he started getting more money, he's like, Oh, I love Hellboy. Hellboy is a good character. You know, oh, he's so cool. But with David Harbour, you can tell with his acting that he likes... That he wants to keep doing this. He, he, think, he thinks this is fun. You know, he's having fun with the role. He's not going, my name is, uh, you know, Hellboy. He actually has emotion when he's playing the movie. He actually has, he's actually doing things that I like. He's have this dead glare on the entire time in the movie. He gives, you know, he gives it his all, you can tell. 
and I really like it. And it's kind of like if you see Stranger Things, he kind of gives a little bit of heart uh, hopper in there, a little bit here and there that kind of kind of shines through at certain points. Like, oh, I feel I'm feeling a little hopper here, man. That's that, that, that's pretty cool. Or you, or you can like you know it. It's things like that. You know. And with Ron Perlman's Hellboy, you don't really feel for him. You don't feel for him as a character. You don't really care. You don't care about him. At least I didn't care about his Hellboy. But with David Harbour's, I cared. I wanted him to live. I didn't want these things to happen. I wanted him to be accepted in society. I wanted, you know, I felt for him. I understood his character way more than Ron Perlman's. And I thought in this movie he was way more fleshed out. Way more just natural as the character. It wasn't so, so like, cardboardish. Just, okay. Okay. I understand. And it was just super fun. And he was just, like, a super cool dude. And, the, again, the makeup on him, it looks fantastic. I love the new, more comic-accurate design of Hellboy. Because for anyone who says he's not comic accurate, this movie is one of the most comic accurate movies I've ever seen out there. Even compared to Marvel, this is one of the most, the most identical things. Because I read kind of like the key points of the comics, of the Blood Oath. I think that's what it's called, Blood Oath. No, Wild Hunt. It's Wild Hunt. It's Wild Hunt. It, Hell, Hellboy, Wild Hunt. I read a few panels from that and kind of just, you know, you know, kind of just looking at it a little bit here and there. And it's mainly just the key points, you know, like important things. And certain parts of the, of the movie have have like panels that are almost exactly like in the comic books, which is super cool. And certain like even certain dialogue options, there's like it's straight from the comic book, which I love. And if you say this movie is not comic accurate, well then you're being ignorant and you haven't seen Hell One, you haven't read Wild Hunt, because. This is one of the most comic accurate movies to date. Okay, I'm gonna stick to my words. One of the most comic accurate to date. Another thing is, people need to get their head out of their asses and have an open mind. When you're seeing this movie, you need, you absolutely need to have an open mind. Okay, you can't go in expecting a Hellboy three. You can't go in expecting something better than Hellboy one and two. You need to go in with an open mind. Kind of just. You can, like, hope the movie's gonna be good. That's what I went in thinking. I was like, maybe this movie's good, maybe it's not. I heard the reviews, whatever. And then I saw it, and I loved it. It's one of my favorite movies to date. Number one is Bohemian Rhapsody. Number two would probably be Moana, and number three would have to be Hellboy. Maybe Hellboy and Moana kind of fight there. The new Hellboy. And it just, because it's a super cool movie, it's a super awesome monster movie. And that's what it is. It's a monster movie. It's not a it's not a horror movie like they were saying. It's a full on blockbuster monster movie, and it's super awesome at that. Another thing is, excuse me. Another thing I want to talk about: the designs of everything was super cool. I really like the designs of the monsters and the boar and Hellboy in general and just everything like the the aesthetic feel I got a more gothic horror from it I guess that's the word you would describe I guess that's the kind of thing you describe for this movie it's gothic horror at its peak I think because just the way Hellboy looks and the way like the, the the monsters are designed it's designed in such a way where it's like, oh, dude, that's, that's, you know, kind of like, you know, like, <laughs> this is the dumbest way to describe it, that, that, that's pretty gnarly, dude, you know, that's kind of crazy, man, it looks really cool, and that's what I want from it, you know, that's what I wanted from it, and, this is, like I said, the designs are so cool, and yes, Del Toro, he has his own little swirly touch to every little thing he has, and it makes it amazing, which it does, but I think with Hellboy, it didn't work, it worked, but it didn't at the same time, Hellboy's not really like a... Oh, a fantastic little creature running through the forest. It is a bloody, bloody just, but it's just a bloodbath of just fists and guns and body parts flying all over the place. That's what I think of Hellboy. Like when I think of Hellboy, that's what I think of. It's just hardcore gothic horror, just balls to the wall, going to hell, fighting Saint. That doesn't happen in the movie, but you know, that kind of stuff not swirls and rot and not not swirls and you know del toro kind of thing so i think this movie 
the aesthetic of it is awesome. The design of the monsters are incredibly cool. And just, everything is super awesome. It's super awesome about the movie. And I love it so much. And I, and I really hope they make a sequel. Because this movie, it does not deserve the what, a 12, 13, like 11. What was it? it was like 11, 12, or 13. I can't remember. But it doesn't deserve a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. If I were to rate it, I would give it a 63 on Rotten Tomatoes out of 100. It's not the best movie, but it's certainly not the worst. And it's one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. I can say that for a fact. It's super, super, super awesome. And I would be happy to go see it again. If I could, I would go see it again right now. Another thing is... I guess my overall thing for the movie is it's an awesome that's kind of the word you use to describe it. it's not like like it's cool you know it's it's you know it's cool it's good and stuff like that but the word I use to describe this movie is awesome this movie is an awesome bloodbath of bullets excuse me monsters and fighting Everything I want from a rated R Hellboy movie, everything I wanted from this movie, I got in almost the exact way I wanted it. I got things I didn't even know I wanted in the movie. And it's just, it's such a good movie. Yes, it has its flaws, CGI, a little bit of storytelling, stuff like that. But other than that, it's a really good movie and people are bashing on it way too much. Because it's not Ron Perlman. Because it's not Hellboy 3. This, to me, in my opinion, was the smartest decision they could have done with this character. I'm glad they didn't do it with Hellboy 3. Because I feel like I would have been... So at this point, I don't care what happens to that Hellboy. I don't care. Like, cool, he's going to have kids. I don't give a rat's ass. Cool, he, you know, find new dude. I don't care about Ron Perlman's Hellboy. I just don't care. But with David Harbour's, if they're to be like, oh, he has a love interest, I'd be like, who the hell would be, who the hell would want to love someone that ugly? That kind of thing. With, you know, like, like you know, I love, you know, Hellboy, you know, I'm not trying to be mean to him, I guess. But it's that kind of thing, you know, so I care about that Hellboy. It's like, it's like, it's like, oh, someone tried to kill Alice or something like that. It's like, who the hell would he even dare try to touch out? You know, it's one of those, I care about this movie. I care about the characters in it. And with Ron Perlman's Hellboy, the only character I cared about was probably Abe. And he was kind of, like, he was in the movie, but not that much. I care more about Abe than anyone else in that movie because Abe is such a cool character and I love Doug Jones. I just want to give a quick shout out to Doug Jones. He is super cool and super awesome. Like, oh my god, he's so cool. Like, I love all of Doug Jones' work. And I really hope... Oh, this is going to be like, you know... Abe is not in this movie. Abe is not in the movie, okay? I mean... <sighs> you know what, here, how about this? I'm going to give away one spoiler. One spoiler from the movie, okay? This is it. it has nothing to do with the story. It has nothing to do with that. It's nothing that huge, but it's pretty big. Abe is in the movie. Abe, the fish guy from the first two, he is definitely in the movie for sure. But, hold on real quick. Excuse me, okay. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to do this thing so it's like, ugh. Anyways, <laughs> I'm kind of just like, eh. Um. Anyways, I just want to see something. Okay. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> Abe is in the movie. He, he is at the end of the movie. Um. And you see, like, like, you know, these dudes are like Hellboy, Alice, and Benjamin, you know, the leopard guy. They're all taking these people down this area, kicking a bunch of people's asses. And like, you see this tattoo on this guy's arm. And it's like a Neptune kind of tattoo. And at first in the theater, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know? It's like, they're not going to bring up Abe because the director said Abe is not in this movie. They said that Abe wasn't going to be in the movie. I was like, okay, cool. 
the fighting and everything like that, you know, shooting everybody, that kind of stuff. And then it goes to this big blue tube. Kind of like, like it's like lighted up, you know, and it's like, or it's like, you know, it's like Austin and you uh, hear Alice say, like, you know, you hear Alice say, hey, look at this. So they all turn, you know, like Benjamin Hellboy turn. He's this big, huge blue canister. It's like huge. You know, it can, it can hold someone. And instantly I was like, that's Abe. That's Abe. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's Abe. What the hell? What the hell? That's Abe. And I was freaking out. It was super exciting. And then you see a hand, a fish hand, being put on the glass. And I was, like, in the theater, I wasn't actually, like, moving or going, like, oh, like, like, like I had my finch class clenched. I was going, oh, like, I was going like that in the theater while the music played the bam, 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 down, 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 down. I said my French class, I was super excited, cause like, oh my god, oh my god, it's Abe, and it was just super cool, because it's like, dude, it's Abe, and so I'm really excited, I'm so, they need to make a part two, and if they do, I will, I will throw out my money to go see part two, I will throw out my money to go see part three, I'm actually planning on saving up to buy a lot of merchandise for Hellboy because I want to support this movie as much as possible because it deserves more recognition than it's getting and it deserves better reviews. People need to get their head of their asses and see that this is a good movie. Not a great one, but it's a good movie. <sighs> Another thing is, this movie is beyond balls to the walls of violence. Violent. This movie is incredibly violent and incredibly crazy. That's what I love about it so much, is that it's a violent movie about a guy named Hellboy in a strong right hand, you know? And it's just super cool. It's an incredibly violent movie, blood everywhere, which I love about it. It's such a good decision to have. I'm so glad this movie was rated R, because that's what Hellboy needed. Hellboy needed to be rated R. It needed to be revamped in a new hard... And it's a hard R, I'm not going to lie. It is a hard R <laughs> movie. I mean, the violence in that movie is insane, and just the blood and everything is just crazy. It is a hard R movie, and I am glad it is. So I think that about wraps about everything up. I talked about what I want to talk about. Um, I guess, you know, like I said, the designs are really cool. You know, I like Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga is in this movie. She's very creepy in this, very nasty looking. She's super cool. Um, I really like her. In this movie, I thought she's a really creepy character. I thought everyone, I thought everyone in this movie was such a good character. Maybe Nimue was kind of okay, but I still liked her nonetheless. And just the movie was super cool, and it was just super awesome. I had such a great time watching it, and I really hope that they make a part two. All in all, I give this movie about a uh, hmm, eight point eight point five eight point five eight out of ten. You know, it was a good movie in my opinion. It was, you know, I, I'll give it a 7.5. A 7.5. You know, it just had a lot of action. It was super cool. The only problems were the CGI wasn't the best at a lot of time. I'll be fair. It wasn't a be it wasn't the best a lot of the times, but it still wasn't that bad. It didn't make me think, oh my god, look at this bull crap. You know. It, you know, it, it never pulled me out of the movie except for the one moment at the end. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, I hope, with that one character. And, um, but if you haven't, then, you know, oh well. But it was just, you know, that's why I give it a 7.5 instead of probably a 10, honestly. And then the story was okay, kind of weak a little bit here and there. A lot of, expo like, a lot of exposition and kind of just not the best... Not the best when it comes to... Where am I going with this? I'm sorry. And then, you know, like, a lot of exposition, you know, a lot of, you know, kind of just like a lot of, a lot of plot, not plot holes. A lot of doors left open for possible sequels, TV shows, go on and, you know, so on and so forth. But yeah, yeah, so I give it a 7.5 out of 10, and it's... How about this? I give it three fists of doom out of five. There you go. Two fists up. <laughs> two horns grown for this movie. Super awesome and it's super cool and I really hope they make a part two. And personally, I love it. I'm going to support this movie till the end of days. I'm going to buy it on DVD, probably Ultra 4K HD when it comes out. I'm going to 
try and buy as much merchandising as I can for this movie. It's going to, you know, I just really hope I can support this movie the best I can. And I will until the ends of the earth. <laughs> so, thank you all for watching. Um, Real quick, I just want to say I'm sorry for no videos this week, or uh, last week. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have this video up probably Monday, uh, maybe even tomorrow for Easter. Um, and then I'm going for, you know, everyone who doesn't really celebrate Easter like myself. And then I'm going to have it, because the original idea was I was going to do a review for this the day I saw it, because it was fresh in my mind. And it's still fresh in my mind, because this movie's amazing. <laughs> but I was going to plan on do it the day I saw it, but I saw it the same day of the Notre Dame fires. So I figured, you know, out of respect and out of, you know, just in general, you know, it was a really bad, and it would have been really shitty of me to upload it during that day. And thank God they put that fire out when they did. Yes, it was only the roof that, you know, was burned, but still, they, I'm glad they put it out when they did, because that would have been awful if it would burned down. But anyways, that was the original plan, was to upload it when I saw it, but stuff happened, of course, and so, um, instead, excuse me. So instead, uh, I'm gonna, you know, this is gonna go up probably, probably gonna go up tomorrow on Easter. Um, and then, I might do it Monday and then Friday post my new Minecraft video that's coming out. Um, I am still doing that, don't worry if any of you are worried. And so yeah, so thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you go see Hellboy. Like I said, I preach this movie. Go see it. Go see it. Go see it. Go love it. Go enjoy it. Go give David Harbour all the love he can get. Go give, go give the makeup artists all the love they can get. Go give everyone all the love they can get on this movie. And just because of the hell of it, go give Dove, Doug Jones all the love you can give because he's just such an awesome dude. And I've been really just, really just loving his work recently because he's such a cool dude. I'd love to meet him in person one day. But. Like I said, <laughs> no, he's such a super cool and super, you know, you know, super sweet dude from what I've heard. So yes, thank you all for watching this video. Really hope you enjoyed. I really hope we go see Hellboy in theaters right now and in IMAX theaters right now. So please go watch it and enjoy it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.